Welcome to the J Train Podcast. J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from New York City. That's right, every Monday and Thursday with your emails, your stories, your questions. Let me say it once, I'll say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's how this whole thing works. You listen, you enjoy, you get the haws, and then you tell a friend, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears. We'll take them all. Even the earless community, send them along. We'd love to have them. And listen, <clears throat> this podcast is user generated. Keep sending your emails, jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. And I want to do a brief announcement. There's going to be some changes. Um, I, I came to the conclusion that I'm doing, I want to diversify the portfolio. And I know people love this show. And on Patreon, I'm doing three extra podcasts a week. Uh, for $5 a month. And you can go to patreon.com slash Jared Freed to sign up. The three extra podcasts are Luxury Lounge, One More Email, and um, Coffee with J-Train. Coffee with J-Train is really me just reading notes off a page, stories from the week, pop culture news. One More Email is an email that's too long for this show. Sometimes people write emails to me that are legitimately uh, novels. So that just doesn't make sense for this format. Now, Luxury Lounge started as a 10-minute podcast where I could complain about things that are very luxurious, that anyone could look at me and go, Jared, there are bigger problems in the world. And I wanted to create a safe space for me to complain about things that during, and it came out of the pandemic because I'm sure a lot of you know that it's hard to complain about things that are annoying but you know aren't that big a deal because there is such a big thing happening that has affected everyone's life. So you're not really sure who can I go to to be like, oh, man, I hate putting on a duvet cover. How do, how do I complain about those things? So I created the Luxury Lounge as a place for you know myself to complain. And what happened was – Patreon subscribers started commenting with their luxury lounges. So every episode I would read a couple of theirs, I'd do mine, and it went from a 10-minute episode where it was just my complaint to like a 15-minute episode with my complaint and someone else's complaint, and now I'm getting about 15 to 20 luxury lounge complaints a week, and that has turned into what I would call a hit. And so I was thinking... I'm doing a lot of dating advice. I have J-Train and I have you up and we talk a lot about dating and relationships and we're going to do that today. And I was like, how do we kind of extend the universe? So we're going to try this out. Thursdays are going to be luxury lounge. It's going to be on the same feed as J-Train. J-Train will be every Monday and then on the same feed, the same place you get this show you're gonna get luxury lounge and it's gonna be a different format but the same old j train spitting the same truths but more complaining and you listener miss listener mr listener uh you can participate just like on patreon so if you have a luxury lounge complaint send it to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Title it Luxury Lounge, and it will be for that show. I don't know if it's going to get read on the air. If you want it guaranteed to be read, you got to sign up for Patreon, get involved with the Patreon version of it. That'll still be every Wednesday. But if you want it, we're going to have guests, and the guests and I, we're going to complain with you and all your complaints, and I'll have a new complaint every week. This Thursday, we're going to have a Luxury Lounge episode, and I want to hear what you think. Let me know, DM, Instagram, comment, tweet, let me know. You know where to find me. So that is the big announcement today, and I'm excited to see where it takes us. I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys all go, I don't know, bring back J-Train. Okay, maybe we do that. Maybe it starts as one thing and becomes another, and that's kind of my motto. We write to edit. So that's the whole point. I'm very excited uh, to do another J Train podcast because we're going to do your dating questions. J Train podcast at gmail.com. If you just want a regular question, send it in. If you have a luxury lounge complaint where you get to air a complaint, title it Luxury Lounge. Very excited about today's guest. Hilarious comic. First time on the show. Chanel Ali, thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Sorry for that long winded explanation, but this is a big moment. You're coming on the episode before we make kind of a big change with things here i like it i like it i feel like your listeners are going to have a whole new schedule they're going to be so right. busy they're going to be stressed out but also complaining it's going to be sure good. 
This is to alleviate stress. And I think, you you know, the luxury lounge is what we as comedians get to do a lot of times. We go on stage and we go, can you believe, uh, you know, plates in the sink that never get washed? And you go, ah, oh, and you get to make fun of it. That's kind of our stress release. So I want to give the listener that opportunity as well. Yeah, I'm tired of complaining about fancy hotels alone. I'm tired. I need Do, to so, what is the worst part of a fancy hotel? Give me, give me your fancy hotel luxury complaint because I'd love it. You're coming to us from a hotel right now. And I want everyone to go follow Chanel. She's so funny. I love watching her on stage. At Chanel Ali. It's going to be all over my Instagram. She has an album out that you can listen to anywhere you listen to music. We've done the album thing, people. Anywhere you stream <laughs> music. Pandora. Uh, iTunes, um, uh, Apple, Apple. Napster. it's even on Napster. Can you believe Na- that? I, I, <laughs> you just if said I could Napster. go back in time and tell 12 year old Chanel one day you're going to have stuff on Napster and it's not going to be porn. She would have been blown, blown away, not blowing, blown. That's <laughs> crazy. So I but and then also uh, uh, Spotify, you know, yes. the, 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 it's everywhere. So and, and Chanel is so funny. So it's and I always say that the, the stand up album is the cousin to the podcast. It just takes you to a different place. You listen on a car ride. It takes you. You're inside the room. You hear the silverware and the glasses <laughs> clinking. And it's called Chanel. Number one, Chanel. Yeah. Number one. I love that name at Chanel Ali. Go listen to the album. It's all it's all there. So. Give me your luxury complaint. I would love if you had one. I've got a few, but I'll start with one that always pisses me off. Very fancy hotel, very fancy bathroom. Get to the shower. Why is the knob right under the faucet? So I totally have to agree. get all the way in this very fancy glass room just yeah. so I can get splashed with cold water because also I don't know how to work it. Absolutely. It's not your – that's the biggest problem. It's not your – um, knob because we all have become accustomed to our own knobs yeah. so that we don't get splashed by the water. And what oh. you're saying is correct. They should be accounting for yeah. our, our newness to their knob to be able to not get splashed. Absolutely. And how many times have I been in a hotel and they had two knobs to turn the shower on, both of them going opposite directions, nothing is labeled, everything sparkly. Right. And then boom, I can't even get the water hot. I just have and- a cold shower. And during a pandemic, they're hurting our immune system by making us get cold while in a warm room. And that's really what makes you susceptible to sickness. This is this is a huge issue. Yeah. And now I'm using all of the tissues. They only have one box in here. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's, it, everything is related. Now, greenhouse effects were affecting yes. the environment. You know, yes. more trash, more waste. And uh, listen, on that subject, I've been staying in hotels during the pandemic. And you can see the problem I have is with you know, everything is a pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. You know, we go too far one way, we come back and go too far the other way. During the pandemic, they had all these rules that like, you can't, you know, we're not going to, you know, clean the room. We're, you know, we're going to come in once with towels. And now that things are opening up, you can tell they're like, you know, we're not going to be doing towels anymore. I'm like, wait a minute, we still need towels. Like what's going on? You're still, you opened, like, let's figure this out. I stayed in a hotel the other day, and when I went to check out, I just like mentioned to the guy, I was like, "There was no like washcloths. Is that a thing that you guys are doing that we don't give out washcloths anymore?" And he was shocked. He was like, "What? There was no washcloths in the room?" Yeah. And I was, I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Why didn't you tell us yesterday?" I was like, "Well, I thought you did it on purpose. I thought you were purposefully trying to force us to use bigger towels to dry." I don't know. I thought it was this, part of this thing that's happening, and I didn't want to complain. This is the whole point. With this is. You, we're we're doing the luxury lounge right now for anyone that's nervous <laughs> because one complaint speaking. because one complaint leads to another. You're totally right. We don't even know what we can say something about. You're like washcloths must. We all just kind of like revert to like this must be to save the elderly yeah. uh, because washcloths transmit yeah. the disease more easily. Like we just yeah. assume, and it's Absolutely. like. And they kind of let us assume. I felt like in not using a washcloth, I was saving the world as well. (laughs) And then when I came downstairs and this guy made me feel dirty, like literally dirty, like you're well, you're gross that you just dealt with that. I was like, well, I was trying to be a good person. That's another luxury lounge complaint is when someone when you ask a question and then they ask another question that's actually judgmental. You're like, hey, are we not doing washcloths? You haven't been using a washcloth? (laughs) I'm like, keep your voice down, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> well, everyone in this lobby, right? <laughs> we're all doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought this was we. Yeah, we all teamed up and held hands <laughs> to save the world from a disease via the washcloths. Right. I. Now, I have to ask you, you're at a fancy hotel, which is very nice. I love it. Do they have, um, this is another luxury lounge complaint that I have, and this is to get people warmed up for Thursday, but we're going to get to the emails, jtrainpodcast.gmail.com, Chanel Ali, at Chanel Ali on Instagram. Go, 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 go listen to her album. I've told you before, you think you think me saying listen to the album is like, oh, whatever. No, every time you play it, we get money. You're already paying. <laughs> Okay, the album is waiting for you to laugh. We're literally giving you the biggest favor of your day, a laugh. You're welcome. So go, go, go. Chanel number one, Chanel Ali. Now, I have been at fancy hotels. I stay in them every now and again. Sometimes I stay in not so fancy hotels. It happens. Same. Same. Are they putting out the soaps and bath gel and shampoo or is there a box on the wall with a dispenser? What are you dealing with here? Um, this one, they they did put out a little uh, shelf with some prepackaged soaps and conditioners and stuff. Okay. But I stayed in a hotel the night before that was much cheaper. And they mm. had huge bottles of various things in the shower. I didn't hey. trust it. Didn't trust it. They didn't even say what it was. It was just like shampoo, conditioner, soap. And I was like, well, I need information. Where's the chamomile? I smell chamomile. Where yeah. is it? Who put it? Where is it? You know, it just made me feel like they don't even think we're we're really focused on using the bathroom ever. You, you know what's interesting? You you know, I bring up a complaint, and then you went in a different direction than I could even imagine. Yeah, you don't even get to see the ingredients and what's it coming from for most of these because it's a big bottle that's attached to the wall, and sometimes it's on the back side of it, and it's like plastered on there you can even look at it in because they don't want you to try to steal it and especially being a person of color there's a lot of like hair stuff that i can't really use so i need to know what's in there or i need to say well i guess this is a fancy enough hotel i guess they'll care and they use some good you know (laughs) and (laughs) now i have to judge them based on other things so i can wash my hair and you have to judge them if they're like a a company that has people of color in decision-making roles to have, to even think of that for the shampoo and the soaps. All those things, yes. That is something I never even would have thought of because, you know, I'm dealing with like, you know, my Jewish hair that like, I'm just like, throw anything on it. I I don't care. You know, I I (laughs) put it underwater and use nothing. That's kind of what I'm doing. I stay in hotels a lot with my boyfriend who's also a comedian. I actually don't think you know him, but um, Mm. he has very, very sensitive skin, like even more sensitive than mine. And sometimes Mm. just like the water in a hotel he will be so dry, like physically you can see it. It has just just dried him out. And I'll feel so terrible because all I have is this terrible hotel lotion, which I know isn't going to fix it. <laughs> it's so it's like this stuff. never ending thing of like we stayed in a luxury hotel, but now you have a rash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This is what you get. You're going away gift. I, I don't like the thing on the wall because, first of all, touching it. I'm always like, they not, I don't believe that. And and also this isn't to say that the people who clean the rooms aren't doing a good job, but it's just something you would forget. There's so many things. There's so many rooms they have to do. I mean, I liked undoing the little plastic thing and pulling the soap out and being like, I'm just going to touch this soap now. Yeah, I'm not rubbing my hand on something that someone else rubbed their hand on seven minutes ago. The other problem is they forget to refill them. Yes. That and you, I was in a hotel where I'm like sitting there hammering the yeah. top, and it's like, and someone said to me, the response was, "It's for the environment. It's good because you're keeping those little bottles." Well, why at the cheapest ho- Why are we starting with the environment at the cheapest hotels? Yeah. Why are we? Why are we starting with me? And ho- like, like if I can't, aff- why am I patient zero for helping the earth? Shouldn't it be if we're gonna have the big thing on the wall? It's at a nice hotel where at least they have like a whole write up about what botanicals the yeah. soaps came from at the front. That would be, a, it should start with the rich Absolutely. people. And, and that's how we can pay it forward. Like yes. they're taking all of the, the ply out of the cheap hotel toilet paper, but these rich hotels, yeah. those people need to walk around with itchy butts. That's I, what's going to bring change to the world. Does totally your agree. butt hurt today? Mm-hmm. Well, then maybe you should be nicer to people. Yeah, you that's right. Life. We solve the world epi- every every episode. And listen, Chanel is hilarious. You need to go follow at Chanel Ali. Let's do some emails. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. 
jtrainpodcast at gmail.com, jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Hey, jtrain, love all you do so much that I'm a loyal Patreon member. Thank you. Patreon.com slash Jared Free. <laughs> Now to my question. I recently joined a co-ed intramural soccer team with about 20 people that meets once a week. My team is made up of all individual players, so no one knows each other, so everyone is pretty friendly. See, I like that yeah. in an intramural team. Like sometimes it's like, you know, it's a whole group that everyone like knows each other from one person, then it's like there's some sort of hierarchy. Everyone like yeah. kinda, if the person who like is the linchpin of the whole group, like the person that like keeps it all together, like doesn't show up, no one shows up. That sucks. Yeah. This is good. Um, one of the guys on the team sparked my interest and we've been we've had two short conversations so far. Um what I know about him is that he's 26, has been playing soccer for most of his life. He lives in the area and has a dog. How do I get to know this guy better in a non-creepy way? I'm looking to meet new people and date now that things are starting to open up. However, I'm not sure that if he's single, but he was very chatty both times we talked. Any advice would be helpful. Thanks in advance. Chanel, what do we think? Well, I mean, I don't know why we're pushing away from being creepy. Like, why are we, yeah. why, do we why do we think that's not an option? I say let's get even creepier stop this guy online yes find all his family all his friends go through their things determine what kind of environment he grew up in sure then casually bring those things up at the next game there we go you got you know more to talk about, about him and then also you know let's check on his sexuality because if he's just meeting other people to run around i just you know i don't always trust guys who can keep a good schedule like that i don't always <laughs> trust them that they're working on themselves and that they're sweating with others like i want to really decide if this guy is even into girls because he might not be you don't That's even it. know all of these are fair points and i love what you said about uh let's get creepy and listen you know, everything we say is taken with a grain of salt. We're not telling right. you to like, you know, we're not telling you to like go up to him and like, you know, touch his ass and be like, wow, you've really been working out lately. Like <laughs> this is, there are levels to creepy. And yeah. let's, and let's just tell you right now, creepy, uh, if you're hot, you're not creepy. <laughs> and and really? when I say that, anyone can be hot. This isn't to say... <laughs> If you're this person's type, if you're this person's cup of tea, if they're this person's kind of look, there isn't much you can do to be creepy to a certain point. Like other than like waiting outside his window and peering in and being like, I yeah. knew I'd find you one day like that's creepy. And sometimes not- there's like some really good energy in being honest with someone and being like, I was really like interested in you. So I took some time to try to find out what you're interested in. Like, obviously sure. that's, the, that's the clean way to say it. And Absolutely. if the guy is really, you know, interested in having somebody who gives a fuck about what he cares about, they will usually like that. Absolutely. And the beauty of what the situation they're in is she has an end date. So yes. with the intramural schedule, like, you know, there's there's this thought when you become attracted to someone that you're like, well, I got to wrap. I got to like get it right away and wrap it up right now because they're going to find someone. It's like if that's the case, that's OK. Like, let's let's yeah. let fate have some you know, hand in this. But if right now you have a many a weeks to get to know this guy. Yeah. You you know, like let's, let's make a point to have a conversation with him when you, when, when the games are going on, here's some things that I would do if I was this person. Always stop. Don't talk about soccer. You're on an, it's an intro. Is it a, 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 a co-ed intramural soccer team? Yeah, so everybody's no, talking about soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about, you know, Messi and all the, in our favorite, you know, uh, Premier League teams. You want to go off the topic. You already have soccer in common. You don't need to talk about it. You both like staying in shape and playing soccer. So let's stay away from workouts. Let's stay away from soccer. Let's dig into how was your weekend? What else did you do? Are you, you know, I, oh, and I would even do these things where I go, oh, I drank too much this weekend. Sometimes just commenting, I, yeah. whatever you do, oh, yeah. all I did this weekend was eat burgers. If he yeah. likes burgers, he's going to go, or if he likes you, he's going to go, where'd you get oh, the burgers? Yeah. You know, and, and that, as long as it's off the topic of what you're doing, now you've actually fleshed out a relationship because now you have three things in common, being in shape, soccer, and burgers. Yes. And everybody's already talking to this guy about soccer all yeah. day. 
He's going to be refreshed and interested. And guys love talking about themselves. Anytime love I'm it. trying to like run game on a guy, all I do is ask him questions. I shut up. Just <laughs> let right. him go. What do you mean by that? Just say that. What do you mean by that? They just what? go, go, go. Any opinions on cryptocurrency? Well, I'm happy you asked. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me that. I can't believe I was trying to tell my mom, but here you are. Now I can tell you. And here's the thing about making it a topic that's not soccer. Now you have an activity to do together. So you have to make sure, because you're really looking to see if you guys are a match. What 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 the the struggle with this type of thing is like you kind of try to like fashion conversations to what they like. No, 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 no. You want to talk about something you like, and I gave the the suggestion of burgers because I'm a fat piece of shit and I just want to talk about food. But I'm <laughs> saying I would make it about a food meal I had that I loved because if they love it, now we're quote unquote matching on something. Yeah. Now it becomes, well, we should go get burgers sometimes. And again, we should go is a hint. If he can't get the hint of make the plan from there, yeah. then I at some point you have to wonder when you're unattracted to him because – that that also has to be a part of the equation, right? Like Absolutely. you're putting out all the bird seed and he ain't following. Like, Ugh, even it's kind of he, unattractive. Even if he's just a little bit of a bumpkin and just isn't picking up on the cues, have you already decided that you want to be with a bumpkin? Because if you haven't, and you know that you're a social social person that's probably going to bring him to situations with other people and want him to be included in it, then you already know he probably isn't going to be quick enough for you. Yeah, there that's and that's okay. That's okay. Not ever you took an interest. Now you're trying to see if that interest is worth pursuing. J train podcast at gmail.com, J train podcast at gmail.com here with Chanel. But I do Ali. I do want to say ahead. to this girl, if you do mess with him and it doesn't go good, you're gonna have to mess with everybody on that team because <laughs> we don't take L's out here. That's and right. I want these numbers in your favor. So that's right. If you, if you if you do if you do that one and you don't like it, you gotta do them all. You gotta play some World Cuppy. You gotta play with the whole team. <laughs> J Train we Podcast. Make, we don't make the rules. We play the game. That, that's right. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Blue Blocks. Blue Blocks makes the best sleep mask known to man. That's it. Total darkness. I I have it. I use it. It's amazing. Um, I use it on flights. I bring it with me. I'm using it to go to bed, and I'm using it on flights. And I will say to you right now, if you need to catch some Z's, this is the mask for you. It's may basically what they said is the sleep mask isn't great, just generally. And they were like, "How do we make a better mouse trap?" And they did. Any amount of light can keep me up, and even red light on my TV will annoy the hell out of me. The Remedy Sleep Mask from Blue Blocks blocks out everything. Total darkness, 100% blackout. It's like the Sandman is personally cupping your eyes so you drift off to dreamland. Zero eye pressure. Easy to sleep in. This is a big thing. If you've ever worn like an eye mask that get, comes on the plane, you're like it, it, it kind of digs at you, and it's it, it feels like it's pressing on your face. It's not comfortable. This is comfortable it just feels like the pillow is a part of your face and i will say this we have been training for this you might have thought sleep mask i'm not comfortable doing that a year ago but now you've been wearing a mask for a year you're used to something on your face so this is actually the perfect time to get in the sleep mask game it's contoured sides allow for side and belly sleepers no slipping ultra lightweight the breathe, breathable fabric won't leave you feeling overheated they thought of everything blue blocks has done their research to make the best sleep mask available that's i love a company like this that they were like let's we're gonna do one thing and we're gonna do it amazing support them because they support this show get yours today in 20 20 20 20 percent off with code j train j train j train at blueblocks.com slash j train that's b-l-u b-l-o-x dot com slash j train for 20 percent off blueblocks.com slash j train and use code JTRAIN for 20% off. Sleep tight. At Chanel Ali. Go follow, go follow, go follow. Go, go, go. Hilarious the album. Chanel number one. Go, go, go. Stream it. Pause right now. Download it. <laughs> then come back and keep listening to this episode. <laughs> Is bad news just an out? Feathers, feather, feathers and feathers for you and all the content you're constantly churning out. Especially everything this past year since the pandemic began, began, it was comforting in times of uncertainty. Well, I appreciate that. My answer will probably end up in my email, but I still feel like I need to hear your specific advice for my situation. I've been seeing a man I met on a dating app for about three to four months. Okay, when I hear three to four months, we have to acknowledge 
where we are in the history of time. Three to four months in 2019 is different than three to four months in 2021, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. That, so, so let's remember that. For context, I'm 26, he's 40. Both total hotties slash catches in our own respects, might I add. Okay, good for you both. I was hesitant at first because I've never dated anyone that much older. But he seemed like a really interesting guy and he had we had good chats and banter over text and phone calls before we met up. Okay, we're in Toronto where things are still locked down. So after initial walk date, we started getting together at his place. All very important to know. All very important information. Toronto is locked up. It is yeah. tougher there. And also... 40 and 26, you go on one walk date. I know you feel comfortable, but you're still going to his place. Not a lot of <laughs> heavy lifting, right? He's he's going to keep you in the neighborhood for sure because yeah. he doesn't want to go far. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we have to acknowledge the timing and the nuance of this question. At first, I thought it was perfect situation. Me unsure how socially, uh, me unsure how socially accepted we might ever be as a couple, which seemed to take pressure off that as I usually feel when getting to know someone. The whole where is this going vibe. We both had uh, said we were looking for a relationship, but I was still figuring out if I wanted this to lead to something serious. So was just enjoying our time together, getting along great, drinking wine, cooking, baking pies, having fun, passionate sex. Okay. Well, I caught feelings. I, I, I don't, I understand. We have to stop. There's something that happens on this podcast a lot. And Chanel, yeah. I, I, I would love your opinion on this. This yeah. idea of like, oh, I got feelings. Like, that is something like, that you would have to assume what happened, what happened, right? Like, like there's this there's this crazy idea. And I think it's a little bit of a problem in our generation, really, that we give people the things of a relationship. And then when we start to feel connected to them and, and develop a relationship with them, the other person often makes you feel like, well, you're crazy for feeling like that. Why? Because I've been telling you that I love you and yeah. holding you as and cradling you as you go to sleep every night because I, I constantly tell you about what's happening in my life and I'm always kissing you and bringing you gifts. That makes you think I want to be with you. You're psycho. <laughs> you're nuts. It's this constant thing of like, it's not cool to catch feelings. And yet the coolest people love love. They love being loved. You're totally right. And when we when we don't acknowledge that, that gives someone the right, not you know, quote unquote, the right that no one has the right to call you crazy, but that allows them to do it yeah. when you're not like, I'm here to date you, see what happens, hopefully fall in love. Like every relationship starts at like, I'm here to date you. I'm here to see what happens. I'm ho hopefully we fall in love. If that doesn't happen, that's the price of admission. Yeah. And 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 pain is also a part of that price of admission. So when you say, well, I caught feelings like you should be embarrassed. Like that's yeah, th that that's kind of goes with the territory. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be to me, it sounds a little crazy to say, like, well, for months we've been spending all this time together while the world is literally on fire. We can't even go outside. <laughs> and you know what? I start, we start, I started to like him. Well, I would hope so. Yeah, I would there, hope there, so. there'd be something wrong with you if you didn't yeah. or there's something wrong with the match. Maybe you'd say and that's a part of the communication that's hard to do. That's uh, listen, that's easier for us to say than do where you go, hey, we're hooking up and I'm not feeling like we're ever going to be serious, but I do enjoy the hookup. That's the hardest thing to say in the world. So hard to open yourself up and really be that secure, to be honest and let someone know like, hey, I want I want to preemptively protect myself. Because I do like you and I am having a good time, but like we have to be honest about what we're both doing. Absolutely. So she writes, well, I caught feelings as if, as if it was a cold and I never made any grand gestures, but was always communicative about where I was at and how I liked him. Then one day he told me he got some bad news. And when I asked more, he didn't want to talk about what had happened. I gave him space, but let him know I was there. What the bad news was is still a mystery to me. I asked to, yeah, we don't like this. This is uh, <laughs> Chanel. <laughs> Chanel just booed for every woman listening to this. Boo, show. It's like <laughs> such toxicity. and sickening. Especially when he's 40. He's 40. And, and I'm not one to like use someone age against them, but like. Let's. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one of those where it's like it's not like you're 23 and you're like I don't know how to handle getting out of this and something bad happened but when you're 40 and you go something bad happened like and you've spent this much amount of time with it like you're just no. someone is deserving of that information yeah you know? and also I only respect you saying something bad happened if the something bad happened thing is like I looked in the mirror today like yeah. then I respect if you're like oh the bad thing happened you know what it was I saw myself and I realized I'm a shitty person and I got I 
I got to leave you alone. I realize I'm a shitty person because I'm having sex with someone who I know likes me and is looking for more and I don't want more. Yeah. And and that's actually like a pretty, like just like we were saying before, that's actually pretty like good for you for getting to that conclusion. Like, uh, like I think we can all respect that. It's still a mystery to me. I asked again, he still didn't want to share, but everything with, with his family and career are fine. However, after whatever happened, there was clearly a change and more space between us. He disappeared for a couple of days, then reached out uh, with a nicely worded breakup text about how great I am and deserve someone that can give me more than he can right now. It was out of character for me, but I chose not to respond because I needed to process it. I already felt like I had overextended my niceness by trying to be there for him and didn't want to say anything nasty and sassy because his message felt genuine. After the breakup text and no response from me, he ended up reaching out to check on me about five Uh, days later. So communication opened back up. I've now seen him a couple times since then and have justified it to myself that it's okay because I'm still not sure if I would want to move forward with a full-on relationship. I know I need to cut it out because it hurt when he ended things and now I feel like a bit of a doormat. If I were the right person, would it really matter what bad news happened that seemed to change things? I feel like I would want to see comfort in him, even if not initially. I, if something bad had happened to me, or um, I read that wrong. I feel like I would want to see comfort in him, even if not initially, if something had bad had happened to me. So maybe we're not on the same page. I would appreciate advice on how to go forward. Uh, any commentary about the situation? Much love to you always, Jared. So, Chanel Ali, what do you think? Man, I I got to be honest. My first instinct is to try to tell this girl to get over on him. Like, yes, totally keep going to house. Let's start stealing some of his things. Let's start, <laughs> like, yeah. let's start reorganizing his cabinets. Like, while he's sure. sleeping, hide one of his socks. Like, just start to do things to make his life hell. And mm. then slowly remove yourself from it because... He's only going to push you down a path of making you question your sanity, making you question your emotional intelligence. And Mm -hmm. I don't think anything is uglier than when a person is creating a scenario where if someone cared about them, they should jump in and then stopping them from jumping in and saying, no, I I had bad news. I don't need your help. It's blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, now you're making me feel like I can't trust my own emotions and my own reactions to your life. And maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough for you when the reality is this girl's very smart and she has a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of good instincts. And because she has a good heart, she's also forgiving. And it's like you keep if you keep letting people take advantage of you in that way, then you only get that. It's unfortunate, but you only get that in this situation that you have with this man. You will have it with other men after him over and over and over again until you decide that um, a person has to give you respect and learn lessons in front of you. I totally agree with everything you said. And it's a situation where she is being sweet and she's being honest. And then she's letting his dishonesty now steer her towards honesty and kind of like this alternate dimension. Yeah. Like as weird as it sounds. So like, like a nurse complex, right? Like, well, I guess I should help him because look how fucked up he is. And it's like, well, I think he was, he was all right before you got there. You you could throw him back. Here's what, here's what happened. Okay. (laughs) They hook up, they're having fun. He, this is the only scenario because if he can't tell you what is wrong, then what is wrong is that we have gotten more serious than I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. If there was a death, like, listen, even a death can, like, a death I could go, like, uh, and I'm bringing up death just because she, you know, it's something bad. It's gotta be something like that. It's gotta be something bad. So I I had a death in the family. It made me rethink a lot of things in my life. Um, And I'm looking at this relationship and I'm going, you know what, this isn't long term for me. I'm looking for long term. And I feel really badly about that because I was in it with you. And I, I I really do care about you. But this isn't the relationship for me. That's actually like to me, that's enough of an acknowledgement. And that's a big thing that kind of changed their perspective that can happen. Yeah. I think a lot of people use that can happen to their advantage. And it seems like that's what he's doing. He's saying some mystical big thing happened. Yeah. And then he let you kind of chew on that. Mm-hmm. And then he came back to check on you to 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 basically re go with this knowing that if we get too serious, you've are you like you're he's allowing you to come back in at you. You're choosing to opt back in right on on his 
you know, parameters, which are, hey, we're never going to get more serious because big ghosts might show up to like scare me away. So I, now you're you're hooking up with someone without commitment, which is what he wants. And I just feel like this. I mean, we obviously can't know for sure. But to me, it sounds like his heart and his mind are elsewhere, like mm-hmm. not maybe not necessarily with someone else, but definitely caught up on an idea of someone or an idea of a certain type of relationship. And because this guy is so full of those things that what he's using women for are small things like fun Mm -hmm. and cooking and sex, like it's small things, but he's not ever searching or allowing himself to become serious with anyone because he's already occupied and he doesn't want to be honest about that. So even in those moments when he's like, Oh, I was having a bad, a bad time and I had some bad news and blah, blah, blah. Like he was just dealing with his own internal stuff. And didn't want to have that hard conversation. So it was easier to say, well, I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. It's just bad news. Listen, and I'm not above this. Like, I, I, I yeah, I'm you know, speaking, like, I'm speaking because I've done this exact thing yeah. before where I had a guy calling me all the time. And this guy was great. And I liked talking to him, but I wanted to talk to another guy more. And that other guy wasn't talking to me. So I would ignore this guy's call sometimes and then not talk to anyone. Just sit there. And it was stupid and evil. And eventually I had to tell him, this is fucked up. I shouldn't do this to you. Go find somebody else because I'm going to keep waiting for this stupid guy to call me back. <laughs> Absolutely. And and the thing that I, it's so interesting. You said like there's other things occupying his brain and time and heart. And it's like the minute you got close to those things, it's like you're digging a hole and you almost got there. And he's like, uh-oh, I can feel them getting close to the things that are actually real, which would make me really in a relationship. And then they're like, hey, I'm going to have to let you know, like something big happened. So you got to back away. And then he calls you back because now you're all the way at the beginning of the tunnel and you got to dig in again. And then it's a cycle that will repeat itself. So I I think my advice and I I, based on your advice of ruining his life and then going away from him is this is not the guy. Um, And I would say it to him as plainly as you had some can you acknowledge what happened? Like yeah. in, 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 Hey, I don't want to date you anymore. I don't want to do this anymore because you yeah. won't acknowledge what happened. Right. I can't be with someone or in any type of relationship that won't even tell me a big thing that happened in their life that made them disappear like, for five days. That thinks that I'm the type of person that would just be like, all right, I guess like, no, you don't, you don't have respect for me. I, I want to be with someone that respects me. And it goes back to the beginning of this conversation. Well, I caught feelings. You, I think this, the emailer, because you're the only one we can like speak to. Right. I'm not saying what he's doing. We've already addressed. He's being a a piece of shit. But when you say, well, I caught feelings, you kind of have to admit to that. Hey, I'd like a relationship. This was going that way for me. Mm -hmm. Now I realize that won't happen. But what you did was kind of shitty. And that's why I'm breaking up with you. Because the idea that he's come back to you like, hey, uh, Went on a little five day, you know, whatever, and then you're bad coming news. back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The bad news is gone. Got rid of it all. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. Here was Chanel Ali at Chanel Ali. Hilarious comic. Go, 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 <laughs> go. Follow. It's all over my social media. The album Chanel Number One. Love it. Go, go, go. Situationship birthday coming up. Okay, this is a oh. this, this is a good one. Jared, I want to thank you for all the content you put out, especially over the past year. You've made working from home bearable. Well, thank you. On to my situation. I'm 25. Have been in what I could only describe as a situationship for 10 years now. Oh, my gosh. Oy. Okay. We've that's, obvi- common, that's common law in some state. <laughs> if something happened right. to one of you, the other one could get some money. I'm just saying. And in certain I, states, there are I would love. I would love to hear what he says like if you were like how long you been with the uh we hook up like (laughs) on and off since the spring (laughs) (laughs) we have obviously been on and off and had we have never been boyfriend girlfriend however we have been exclusively having sex at a couple points in time it just seems to never be the right time for us and i think at this point we are scared to lose the good friendship and sex we have had together since we are in high school since we were in high school so oh wow so let's say they met senior year. They could be 28 on and off. Like that's. That's crazy. Oh, no, she's 25. So they, oh, met, they like met when 15, they were 15, 15. Okay. So they, they were having terrible sex for a few years and then it got better. Sure. And now they have feelings. Well, it is interesting that 
I, I didn't even do the math on this. And yeah. when we were, when we were joking around about it, yeah. I'm 25 been in what we could describe as a situation for 10 years. Yes. I, we have to like address like the situation ship to me starts at 22. Totally. Like, yeah. Maybe like 22 and a half, maybe. Sure. And, and because before that you're in the, I don't know. I don't want to like lessen their experience together, but to think of it as 10 years because you had your first kiss at 15 together and yeah. maybe, you know, I, I, it just doesn't seem, it feels like one of those things where you make it like more dramatic than it really yeah. is. Like, you know, like, like I in, don't adult, in adult dating, you have to deal with the trials and tribulations of being an adult together. You have to learn mm -hmm. from each other's failures and successes. A lot of times you watch people in their early twenties, make a bunch of different career choices, school choices, things like that. So, you know, there's a different type of growth that happens once you become a real adult and then have to find a partner. Yeah. So I, but that's not to say, so I guess it's 10 years, but like, let's keep in mind right. that the, the idea that like, you know, we we're a decade of us <laughs> and this love. And it's like, yeah, well, part of that, you were watching Power Rangers. So okay. <laughs> right. it, it, it just seems to never they be the right time. They couldn't always like drive to each other's houses. You had to get somebody to take <laughs> you. you know, it, was, it was a different thing, you know? Yeah, you weren't in a, t you know, one year of this was spent with a mom taking you to the movies. So let's <laughs> yeah. not get and the idea of it's never been the right time for us like yeah maybe you went to different colleges like now it becomes if it's 10 years from like 30 to 40 it's a different story than totally. 25 to 15 okay <laughs> we're both scared to lose the good friendship and sex and also i would say you're afraid to lose you know you have childhood memories together you guys are more intertwined than the 30 to 40 year old 10 year relationship situation because it's like you know, you might not even like each other as much as you think. You just know the same streets and you're teachers. Used, you're just used to turning this way and then turning that way. And then your friend comes and gives you a hug. And it's like, it feels yeah. good. It does. Yeah. If, so she writes, anyways, his birthday is coming up. We are, are on one of our longest durations of quote unquote on phase. I want to get him something, but I don't want it to be too much for him. Uh, too much or him think of me as trying to get serious. Mm. I'm completely happy where we are and I don't want more. Is there something I could do or get him that sends that signal? Or should I just take him out for drinks, lingerie, or for both our enjoy of our enjoyment? So this is an interesting question. I, I get what she's saying. Chanel, yeah. what do you think? I always err on the side of when you're giving gifts to a romantic interest, regardless of what you want from them or what you want to happen, it should be much more about you and how you feel giving them a gift versus mm -hmm. how you want them to feel or how you want them to take it. So to me, it's always like, well, I feel this way about this person and I want to show them how special they are to me. So I'm going to go and buy these roses and I'm going to bring them to them. And maybe that is heavier than they feel about me, but I'm not going to uh, make my feelings smaller and make it seem like I don't love that way because that is how I love. So I, I, I always say, don't deprive yourself of giving somebody the love that you really want to give. If you know that that's you being true to you, you know, I totally agree with you. You're a hundred percent right. And I don't think that she's being honest. If you were totally comfortable where you are with him, then you'd be totally comfortable giving whatever fucking gift you want to give. Totally. Like the idea that you're like, well, I got to give, you know, it's like the three yeah. bears of gifts. One's too hot, too cold. I got to give it just right. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Like, right. and it's like, and you, you know, this guy really well. You've known him for a long time. <laughs> you know what he wants. You know, the gift that it would mean a lot to him. I'm sure you guys have secret jokes and memories that you could you know, capitalize on. If you really want to um, establish that, you know, you guys are in an on phase and it's been one of the best phases, then let's make this birthday great. Let's I've make trying it. To, I, I agree. And like I, I've been trying to do a joke about this recently and it's been going. Uh, it's hard to do because it's, you know, you know, when a joke is too real for people, you're like and like to me, you can't scare anyone away. There isn't one version of person that you're seeing that can be scared away if they want to fuck you and if they want to be with you. Yeah. This, the person you can scare away is the guy who wants to fuck you but doesn't want to be with you. And what she's asking is basically like, how do I give him a gift without finding out that he wants to fuck me but doesn't want to be with me? 
and because it'll hurt. And it's yeah. like, listen, if you want to be in this for 10 more years, yeah, you, you can live your life that way. But if you want to like have fun now and, and you know, this won't work out for you either, then whatever gift you give that scares them away, good riddance, because that's okay. But like, you have to at some point acknowledge why this off and on thing has happened. The off and on thing is happening because you guys are kind of using each other as like rest stops before needing to go back into the great highway of dating. And this is, and that's kind of sad, but it's also the truth. And yeah, you're um, comfortable. You've been doing this for a long time. Totally. And, And so listen, if you're having fun and uh, you can't just keep this uh, relationship at the rest stop. At some point, it has to get on the highway. And I I would say to her, like, and what they're doing is totally fine. You're 25. You're having a good time. You're having good sex, I'm sure. Like it's you said, uh, or I don't know if she said they're having good sex. I, I just assume. Yeah, friendship <laughs> and sex. Uh, I don't want, we're scared to lose the f- good friendship and sex we've had together since we were in high school. Like, listen, you can stay on this rest stop as long as you want, but like, if you're living in fear of a gift losing or of losing <laughs> this person, yeah, this isn't fun then. And maybe no. the losing them is the right thing. I always say that some of the strongest girls I know are the people that have um, non-romantic relationships with men who are also very close to them. And mm. I can say that about myself. I have a lot of male friends um, from Philly, which is where I'm from, who we keep in contact a lot. We all have like a big group chat together. Some of them are very important to me. I've had like intimate relationships with them that were not about sex and things like that. However, none of those relationships stop me from having a serious romantic relationship. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's like, mm-hmm. if this guy is you're on again, off again, but you don't feel whatever with him and you're just doing whatever, like make sure you're not putting too much in that so that the thing that you really want you don't even see it. You don't even catch it because you're so caught up with having however good sex with this guy that, you know, you're not crazy about. And what you said is so right. Your friendships don't hold you back from having serious relationships. Is that, you know, she has to ask herself, is this friendship? She's afraid, afraid to lose the friendship. That's not a friend. If, yeah. if this friendship is holding you back from finding something you really do want, she might not want that. She might be yeah. cool with what this is and that's okay. But like, you know, the gift ideas I can give you, I don't like, you know, Chanel said it right. You guys, you know him in a way that I could, you know, yeah. I don't know. Lingerie isn't really like what <laughs> right. gets to me. Like that's like a four second in between yeah. to where every guy's trying to go. So yeah. I don't know how much, how important lingerie is. Like I, I do think drinks and a sexy dinner, that's fine. I think an experience but do it for, you. for yeah. sure. An experience for sure. Like what's the greatest gift you could give him other than reminding him that you're having such a good time together. Cause to me, it sounds like that's what you're so afraid of losing is this good time you're going to have with this guy well then let's just keep doing that let's just keep staying that. on that train the J train is brought to you by upstart do you dread looking at your credit card statement every month i don't blame you upstart can lift that weight off your shoulders so that you can finally feel the relief of being free of credit card debt i can tell you right now this is a great opportunity because upstart you know, listen, it might help you. It might not. That's the beauty of it. You're going to look into it right now. If you have debt and you're paying high interest credit card debt, you can combine all those rates and see if it matches this upstart rate. And then the upstart rate, if it's better, you go with that and you pay it off. And now you pay upstart. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans from one to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. This is just a way to see if you can save yourself some money. So go check it out. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash JTrain. That's upstart.com slash JTrain. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know I sent you. Here's the fine print. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash JTrain. J train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com. Let's do one more email. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. You've been a fantastic guest. Everyone needs to go follow you 
at Chanel Ali. Go follow, go follow, go follow. Okay, I sent you an email before we started. Oh, yes. It's got, I got it. it's got a lot of screenshots. Okay, yes. so this I'm might take us one. a minute, but these are always the most fun. So we save them <laughs> for the end. Okay. <clears throat> this one is called Fuck Boy or Not the Match. You ready? I hope so. <laughs> we can only hope. I was seeing a guy recently, which has since ended. We had a two. We had two great dates, both ending in sleepovers. After the first date, he initiated the second date because he wanted to see my area. He's from the Upper West Side, and I'm from Hoboken. Okay, so he came to Jersey. Okay, that's big time. Wow. I was excited for him to travel. Well, you know what's funny about that? It's like we we read that and we go, went to Jersey. And it's well, like, <laughs> it's, it's still two dates. <laughs> like, it's like, even in the car, like, it's not that far. It's like 20, yeah. 25 minutes. But still, we're like, wow. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Upper West. This guy's, this guy's for real. <laughs> I was excited for him to travel to me. So I take him out. Um, I get us a reservation at a new raw bar in town where we enjoy oysters and fun cocktails. We split the bill. Okay. All right. All right. Those those tolls aren't that much. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Jersey ain't that far. Yeah, we split the yeah. He didn't take a flight. We split the bill and go for a nice walk. Then we end. When then we decided to open some wine I had at my place. When we get back to my place, crack open the wine and quickly get down to business. The sex was good, and we ended up talking till like four a.m. Blame it on the espresso martinis. She writes. <laughs> we. <laughs> is, is there really that much caffeine in the espresso martini? It's like barely, martini? and it's like one actual espresso bean that they like I, grind yeah. up. It's I always thought it was like flavoring. It's yeah, way yeah, more yeah. flavor than anything, and I've had a lot of those, but still, we all make excuses. <laughs> That's right. We talked about everything under the sun. Our fears in life, pet peeves, past relationships, family relationships, golf. Okay. Uh, and even our love and even our love for Larry David. The next day we grab breakfast and go for a nice walk along the waterfront. He tells me he likes my company and expresses how great it feels to be himself. We go back to my place uh, for one last bone before he leaves for D.C. on a trip with his friends. He expressed how he wanted to make plans for when he got back to the city. No, no, we no. Had a hot, uh-oh. You mm-hmm. already see something? I already don't like it. We had a hot makeout before he left my apartment. After he left, we were texting pretty consistently. Then out of the blue, I got this text. What is his deal? Okay, so let's... Oh, is that the one? So let's go to the text. Okay, we can't say his name, right? No, no, we keep names right. out of this. That's you be fair. her, I'll be him. Okay. Is that the blue? Is that, am I yeah, blue? she's the blue. Okay. I'm a little drunkish. Same here. What are you drinking? Some red wine. How about you? Cab. <laughs> nice. Some cocktails earlier and now Truly's smiley face. Oh, nice. Sunglasses. Sound yummy. Wish you were here. For some more drunk cuddles, LOL. Yeah, that sounds nice. Ha ha ha, perhaps a little of that, 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 that. But I mean, if you were interested, but just maybe. I'm always interested in cuddling. Ha 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 ha. Well, same here. Ha ha. When do you get back? I think Wednesday or Thursday, but haven't bought a return ticket yet. Oh, wow. You stand for a while. Ha ha. Yeah, I kind of got peer pressured by my friend and kind of thought, why not? LOL. How long are you staying at your parents? Ha ha ha. You seem easy to convince. LOL. So that's a ha ha and a LOL in the same message. A I'm just saying laughs. I'm just staying until tomorrow afternoon. LOL. He ha ha's her double ha ha. LOL. <laughs> I'm a lot. Ha ha. I am a lot. Ha ha. We'll see how it goes. I may change my mind. How do you get up there, by the way? Maybe when you get back, we can hang out again. And I get here by train usually. Very easy from Hoboken. Just give me a good podcast and I'm good. Maybe the J train podcast. You know the J train. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that I'm a pretty big podcast fan, too. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure I see it working out, mostly because my life's in flux now and I'm not moving and I'm moving around a lot. I had a fun hanging out, but I don't want to be misleading. Sorry, blank. Oh, that came out of left field. But did it? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> your actions didn't match your words, but don't be sorry. I don't know what makes you think I ever wanted something serious with you. Slice. She sliced him. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't do anything per se. Oh, you, always <laughs> brutal when it gets into per se's. Uh, I just didn't want to agree to another date if I didn't see it panning out. I guess for both our sakes. I honestly did have fun on our dates. I guess I just needed some time to think about how I felt. Yeah. No. Oh. Oh. Do we get like a double text here? Oh, yeah. She sent him one twice. Um, and then she gives his profile on the dating apps to see if he's... Okay, so let's go back to her question. That came out of left field. I have to say, they're having this I don't like, think so. I don't think so. I actually think the whole time we were reading these text messages, I was thinking, this guy's laying next to someone else right now. He's actively with someone else. He's not in whatever with his friends and he doesn't know when he's going to get back. He's with a girl that he wanted to be with from the beginning. And and I'm only see this is this this podcast is making me expose myself. I am speaking from being a former fuck girl. OK. And I would I have done the exact same thing that this man did with this lady to a guy before full knowledge from jump knowing my heart's elsewhere. I absolutely don't want to date you. Mm. I am having fun with you. We do have a lot in common. This was a great few days. It's been great. I know I'm not shit right now, though. I just know. And, and you're basically saying and listen, we've all been there. I, I don't think uh, nobody's above this. I, I and, and if you're saying, well, I am. Well, then you're <laughs> not really going out a lot because <laughs> you will meet if you go out a lot. You meet a lot of nice people that you're like, man, this is nice. This is attractive. This is hot. I'm into this. And you know, that's not to let this person off the hook. We're saying this is not a great thing to do. But the idea of like, we had a good couple nights and I said some things that got ahead of myself and now I'm in the soberness of the next day or the, the yeah. week that I'm... And you can even see in the way he's talking. You're, you're right. Um, She's trying to make plans with him, trying to find out when you're coming back. Let's, hey, I we had so much fun, right? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Ha ha. Asking questions about like, your parents and the train, like he doesn't care about that. He, he, he's he, just pantomiming having some type of forward conversation with you when he's already decided a long time ago that his he, heart and his mind are busy. You're absolutely right. He's Johnny Vagstein. He he keeps it vague, but he talks yeah. in future tense and he knows what, and it's kind of the hardest part about seeing these people is they, they know what a good person sounds like. Absolutely. He's, he knows how to sound like he and then he got to the point of no return where he's like ah, i gotta put a full break on this yeah you know i feel i'm a pretty you know <laughs> you go from having chit chat that a couple would oh you like podcasts i like podcasts but if i'm being honest i can't <laughs> see it working out like in the, in the roll two, it back in between those two messages he got a message from another girl and was also <laughs> laying next to a girl that he really likes and she probably does not want him and he was like man this is too much i can't just i gotta cut this down i gotta cut this down right now here's the other problem anyone with the she says he left for a guy's trip to dc and then he's like, she's like, so when are you going to come back? I think Wednesday or Thursday. Anyone with the freedom to do a trip that includes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that started with you having a sleepover where he could do a morning walk isn't really in a rush to do anything. No. Let's let, let's admit, and I'm not saying he's a bad, good person that he didn't, you know, he, you guys got physical together. He said a lot of nice things. You talked about how comfortable he was, but he felt comfortable with you in a 10 minute span where his life is truly the most comfortable and but also the most unhinged. There's nothing. He's not looking to fill like the role of the future mother right now. He's yeah. looking. He is, to me, anyone who has the ability on a Sunday or Monday morning to do a walk on the beach and then say to you how good they feel with you is saying they're looking for you to be a little bit of their escape. beacon, an escape from what yeah. their life that they don't know. Like yeah. if you're having a Monday morning sleepover on a second date where a guy can take that trip, he doesn't have a lot going on. And he's a little confused, I would assume. I mean, you're going you're going to D.C. with the boys during a pandemic. What's up? What are y'all doing? You're partying in a city that's not even open yet. You're like, I, I don't know. I just got to go. 
And and it's and it's you're having so much fun that you're not sure when you're going to come back. You didn't plan to to buy a ticket and come back. I don't think so. I think you're that out there and you're at another girl's house and that's OK. But, you know, like when, it's not until he got to that other girl's house that he started to feel bad. And he knew when he was walking on the beach, he knew back then he was going to D.C. or maybe it wasn't even in D.C. You don't even know. But he was yeah. far with some other girl. He already knew that was going to happen. He already had those plans. He didn't feel bad about it until he got there. And he realized, like, it was a lot. I'm juggling a lot. She writes, do you think this guy will reach out again or do we think he's gone for good? I think, by the way, his loss about to recommend your podcast. Well, you could send him a recommendation still. I, <laughs> so, <laughs> I would say he's going to reach out again. Yeah, I agree. This, th- this type of guy who's not sure about life, that knows that someone makes him feel good, and he's probably heading into a lot of down times. It, again, anyone who's, you know, he texted you with us on a Sunday, but then he's like, I'm not sure when I'm going to come back. No one is that free at a I certain age to, to, yeah, to have that type of life. He's going to come back to you because you do you're going to be remembered in good oh that person said yes to my naked body and we had a good conversation right. and we cuddled mm-hmm. of course so i think the only thing she can do is end it like you don't want to be involved in his cycle of emotional like ups and downs because this is very uneven and i also think this guy is showing a lot of wear and tear already he seems mm-hmm. like he's already been worked over in a few relationships and probably has been thrown to the curb before because he probably isn't that great of a guy. And it's like mm. he's so stressed out because he's still trying to find somebody that really likes him for him. But he's never showing people who he really is. He's never really letting his guard down like, the, you know, it just. Yeah, you there are other types of fuck boys that you could mess with who won't stress you out and mm. will make you feel like living in Jersey is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> totally right. Chanel Ali, thank you so much for coming on. This was fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Everyone go follow Chanel at Chanel Ali. Chanel number one, that's the album. Go play it. So funny. You're going to love it. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Monday and Thursday. Get ready for Luxury Lounge next episode. I want to hear your response. And send in your Luxury Lounges as well. JTrainPodcast.com. If it's a regular J Train email, just a regular J Train email. If it's a Luxury Lounge, title it Luxury Lounge. We'll get it on the show. We'll be back next week. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.